there was that that period of time in you know 93 94 and like you couldn't go to the oscars without watching tom hanks win an oscar oh i remember those days wasn't that, <laughs> wasn't that exciting wasn't that great it was kind of like uh, you know terry bradshaw on the pittsburgh steelers franco harris a couple of immaculate receptions here and there and guess what you get invited to the super bowl what was so the decision to do Philadelphia, I mean, we we think about it now, and well, of course, that's a great role. Why wouldn't the biggest movie star in the world? That was a big world, deal. That was a big deal at the time. People could not believe that you were playing, one, a gay character, and two, a gay character who had AIDS. And so yeah. how many people were telling you... Tom Hanks, this is you cannot do this. I think there was certainly uh, there uh, uh, there was a reluctance, I think, in the industry saying that no one wants to see a movie about this stuff. That number one, it was too scary. There was a great polarization that went in at the time, and when, when Rock Hudson died of AIDS in like a big public way, I think it rattled everybody's cages because. Everybody knew who Rock Hudson was, and so therefore it entered into a different sort of consciousness. But along with it was no small amount of discrimination because, you know, essentially gay civil rights were just at the beginning to, you know, to rise up. You know, the we're queer, we're here, get used to it, the Stonewall riots. By the way, I have met, I met so many old gay guys who said, well, I was at the Stonewall riots, you know, became like, just like, a, <laughs> um, oh, you were? Well, oh, yes, I was there. Uh, what a night it was. It was Judy Garland's birthday and we weren't going to take it anymore. You know, it was like a, it was like a big thing. They, the, 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 as an artist, I'll take on anything that I think is fascinating. The, the bigger, um, stretch there was for the studio itself to say we are going to put 30 million dollars it's a big budget it's movie, a big, budget, yeah. big budget movie jonathan demi you know uh who had who had made uh um silence of the lambs and was a fabulous provocateur when it came down to his choice of uh films um and dedication to it they were the ones that were taking the bigger risk because we were going to make a movie that was going to compete in the marketplace with every action adventure, romantic comedy, you know, get laid hijinks movie that there was. So to put a movie in there that was going to deal with something that was so ripped right out of today's headlines that could have been a documentary, the same thing. And it was the stuff that you were still seeing reports of every day in the news and in the newspapers. Um, that was that was the bigger, uh, uh, I think, deep throw on it. And I met with Ron Nicewaner and Ed Saxon. Ron wrote it, Ed was the producer, and um, Jonathan. And I, you know, I was the guy that was making, um, you know, I had done League of Their Own, you know, I had done, I had, I was a guy that was in movies, but I, I kind of said, well, oh, I see why, oh, okay, I think I get why you want me in here. It's because um, I don't think anybody fears me. I'm not a, you know, I get that. And I thought even that was a smart and bold, bold thing to do. And at the same time, when it came out, uh, the, there was a huge uh, uh, section of the, of the, of the gay uh, community that said, this does not represent us. And they were right. But it also did represent a ton of people who were gay are not quite out of the closet. They were coming to grips with where society was right now as far as acceptance goes. And so it was kind of like a 50-50 a, a thing that ended up being, you know, authentic enough, true enough to make people sit up. And I, it's, it, 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 it kind of like, uh, there was a movie in the 1950 called Gentleman Agreement, Gentleman's yeah. Agreement, yeah. in which Gregory Peck pretended to be Jewish in order to experience what it was like to not be allowed in restricted clubs or hotels and whatnot. And you look at that movie now and you think, well, what was the big deal and from 1952? What was the big deal? And I think there's a degree of that 1990s in America. Uh, we've you know, made an awful lot of great strides as far as acceptance and what have you when it comes down to uh, what your sexual uh, uh, inclination is or what your sexual makeup is. And uh, it, I think it ended up Oddly enough, landing in a very accurate crack for a very specific period of time. So much so now that I don't think anybody would accept a straight guy playing a gay man. Because why wouldn't somebody gay play somebody do you, gay? Do you, think that's, do you think that's right? I think it's, I think it's current. 
Uh, I think it's the actual. Why? Why wouldn't you just go ahead and accept everybody as they are? Now, does it ask, does it ask all sorts of other questions of what is and what is not allowed? Uh, could some somebody who is Greek play somebody that's Italian? Well, I, you know, you might be getting down to there, but. <laughs> Uh, if, if, you know, motion pictures are supposed to capture the truth, and if you're making, if you're talking about who we are currently, there's no reason, I think, to ask anybody to, uh, to you know, to simply pretend to being who they are. You have to go, you have to, go to some other place. So why wouldn't somebody who's uh, gay play somebody who's gay? 